Okay, this is part five of my tutorial series on cycles, materials, and nodes. And in this lesson, we're going to take a look at uh, copying existing shaders and basically groups of information. So, for instance, maybe you have an effect you like, like this effect. You know, this is a nice effect. It'd be very difficult to try and achieve in regular Blender render like this. But, in it, like you see, it's, just, it's nice and it's fast too. Cycles is fast. So, in here for this object here, I have a diffuse shader and it's just going to the output here. Maybe I'm going to change that just a little bit like we've done before. I'm going to get rid of that and I'm going to add a glass shader as well to this and I'm going to add a mix shader alright so then I'll connect them up sometimes if they get too close sometimes you can't connect them Okay, and I'll make it more glass oriented like that. And that has, we'll make this that color instead. And maybe make this a yellowish color. Just kind of balance it out a little bit. And we'll make it mostly the glass. All right, well, just let's say that's the, uh, the color I want. Well, except I don't really like it. So. <laughs> All right, let's. F yeah, okay. Well, for good, it's good enough for the moment. Till I. Yeah. All right. So, well, if you get something that you like, so let's say we have this all together, and you like this particular material, and you want to use it again in another object. So, what you do is you can group these things together. It's kind of like grouping an object together. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take these uh, bounding box. Notice the if I click this, this line is a little more highlighted than these other lines. So if I use a bounding box and I just grab all of these like, oops, I think I got them. Yeah, I got them all because these all three are bright lines. That's how you can tell that they're all selected like that. And the most recent has a border around it. And then once it's in here, I can press Control G just like regular grouping and it adds it to a group. And I'll call this the, you know, purple group. I might have one called purple group already, I don't know. And so that's, and now if you press the tab key back and forth, it's kind of like, you know, going bit between edit mode. And it shows you the stuff that's within this group, okay? So now I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to click here, and I'm going to add a, I don't know, a cone to the scene. Now the cone is below the scene. You know when you're in this rendered mode you can't you know look at your widgets and things like that but so I'm gonna guess where it is uh, that it's below the surface yeah it is I'm gonna guess moving it with and I'll move it over here and I'll scale it down alright there it is in the scene like that and now I'm gonna give it a material and it has this default material but that's not really the one I want I really want to use this material or something similar to that maybe I want to start with that so I'm gonna just move that up here and then I'm gonna add a group and there's the purple group right there so I've added the purple group and suddenly these just kinda don't apply suddenly we're using this I mean in fact if I tab this you can see now it's a group and it's associated with this same one so much so that if I was to change the color in here it changes both groups All right so but like is common in typical blender fashion you can come up here to this button right there you see it says display number of users click to make a single user copy so I will so I'll just call it I'm gonna just call it the yellow group I've made it a new group basically by itself and I'll turn this yellow like that and then that becomes its own group for this project and you can see how these don't really apply in the sense that if I come up here and I, if I shrink that first oops, and I cut that and I cut that and I cut that you can see I still have access to my object I go back into tab, tab mode and maybe I make it green green works a little bit better in there in fact since it's green I'll call it green group maybe I'll call it green glass like that and then if I go click this one go look at purple group 
there's the purple stuff like that so then you can you know when you get a nice cool material like this that you know I'll use in uh, one of my stories because I'm going to use blender for real-time storytelling here in the near future or near real time what allows it is that is cycles in fact I'll, on one of these lessons I'll, we're going to do a comparison between cycles using GPU cards or GPU processing and CPU processing and I'll show you the difference because on well, my system it runs about hmm well let's see well let's find out this is okay I'll just show you right here we'll just run over to the to the render tab real quick that was I'll just one click in and and one click back I mean it's so fast it's less than it's less than a second it doesn't even show it on there let me see if I can make it so it even I mean, 0.79 seconds to do that at let's see what my preset is it's probably a 10 on the integrator let's see on oh, the preview is 10 all right but only 0.79 seconds if I come up here and I change it back to CPU performance if I zoom now watch this same scene 3.58 seconds that's a huge difference we're going back to the GPU oh we are how much nicer is that all right and so yeah I highly recommend you uh, using an NVIDIA card because that's where you can get CUDA support for your best performance okay all right well that's it for this lesson and I'll see you in the next lesson